Senior Executive Vice Chair, uh, Vice Chairman? Pres- Vice President. <laughs> Cuts. Hi, Simon. Hi. You're the Senior Executive Vice President, uh, Communication and Public Affairs of Vivendi. That's correct. And you teach our class, uh, Strategic Corporate Communication uh, at Sciences Po. Yes, that's also correct. Welcome to Seriously. Thank you very much for inviting me. I'm very pleased to be here. Thank you to all your viewers, too. So, or, so shall we? Okay. So, you know, you mentioned uh, earlier in the class when we were presenting ourselves that you didn't, you never intended to go or work in communication. That that's sort of true. fell into it. That's yeah. true. At one stage, I was actually um, head of training and development at a company called Thomson in France. I was uh, asked by the new chief executive in the company, what do you think uh, is wrong with this company? And I said to the new chief executive, I think that communications is crap. In this, right. in this company. At, at Thompson? Yeah, at Thompson. Right. This was in the early 90s. And he said, uh, what do you mean? And I explained what I meant. And about two weeks later, he called me into his office and he said, um, listen, I've been thinking about what you said. He said, I, I've actually fired the communications director. And he said, and uh, you're now in charge of communications. Wow. So <laughs> I said, oh, God, that was a bit drastic. <laughs> I said, I've never done communications before. And he said, well, you've got a big mouth because you said it was, uh, <laughs> it, was, uh, it was crap. So now see if you can do better. So from never having done communication, I then found myself uh, vice president of communications for a, a large multinational French company. Right. And, uh, but, but so what did you study? First? What did I study? Um, I, at university, I studied uh, French and medieval philosophy. That's what I studied at Sussex University in England. And uh, then after that, I did a postgraduate in education at Bristol University. Mm-hmm. And um, one thing led to another. I'm wondering, so, you know, like, you, you, you're, you got into communication and now you're, you're handling, could I say you're handling communication at Vivendi uh, here in France? Well, I'm trying to handle <laughs> uh, Actually, it's not just in France, it's worldwide. It's worldwide. I'm in charge of communication with Vivendi worldwide. What does that actually involve? Well, Vivendi, as you may or may not know, is a world leader in communications and media. And so we own Canal Plus in France, Pay TV, we own SFR in France, we own Universal Music, which is the and, world leader. Worldwide. And Blizzard. And Activision Blizzard, the right. world leader in video games. And we own GVT, Global Village Telecoms in Brazil, and Maroc Telecom in Morocco. And therefore, my job is to put across the best messaging possible for Vivendi, uh, in media, in press, uh, also with opinion leaders across the world, stakeholders, uh, investors, and also to ensure uh, in terms of our advertising, our public relations, our sustainable development programs, and then with all the internal communications that everything is aligned. And also deal with crises. We had one last week when we got attacked by Lagardère uh, Publishing. Um, they, they sued us for 1.6 uh, billion uh, euros last week, so you have to deal with crisis. How does that go? Well, it, so far so good, really. We're 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 defending ourselves very yeah. aggressively, and uh, we think we'll be fine. That we we'll win the case. So, so, what is the core of communication for you? What is the core? The first core of communication is creativity. You need to be creative. Have the idea. Have the great idea that people adhere to. Then. Uh, it's very good execution in the way you put that idea across. So it's creative, but it needs an awful lot of rigor. And a lot of people think that communication is like cool, sexy, etc. Right. It's not. It's actually incredibly hard work, but it's mainly about getting the idea right, and then it's about excellent execution. And the other thing is, because we often pejoratively get called as spin doctors and things like that, uh, that you can make the subject you, you can push across the positives of a subject, you must never lie. And a lot of people think that you, you, know, you need to lie or that you need to put across ideas which, which, which or, you know, for example, often people say they denied it. Well, we never deny anything if it's true. Right. So we have three answers. If somebody comes up like Lagarde the other day, you say, yes, that's true, no comment, or we deny it. And any of those things have to be true. 
So how did how does Sciences Po come into the picture? So now you're you're teaching at Sciences Po. That's true. Yeah, I yeah, am. yeah, yeah. How does it come into the picture? Yeah. Um, well, it came into the picture because one day I was sitting in my office and a friend of mine who runs the communications at PPR called Louise Beveridge. She called oh, right, me yeah, she yeah. said she class said class. Simon, you got I'm teaching at uh, Sciences Po. It's a blast. Uh, can you come and teach too? I said, I haven't got any time to teach. I'm not going to teach. Yeah. And then uh, there I am. I'm now but teaching. now you're teaching. And I love the fact that I think in our class of 25, we must be 15 or 16 nationalities probably. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's very, very diverse. And that is absolutely extraordinary sense of privilege. Both, I th It should be a sense of privilege for the students, even if, if they don't. It's, it's incredible. And it's a sense of privilege for me as, as, as the teacher. But I see my role not so much as a teacher, more of an animator trying to get the best out of the, the people in the room. Because my sense is that if I get them to interchange with each exchange with each other, they'll learn so much more. Mm. So how does it feel to be an Englishman in Paris? What, what is You're it? really curious about this actually. Yeah, yeah. I am. How does, it, how does it feel to be an Englishman in Paris? <laughs> well, I've been here a long time now, so I feel Parisian really. Mm. You know, they're, they're quite rude and they're quite... <laughs> yeah. uh, and you love yeah. it. And well, they're saying that I like, you know, they don't take any shit, you know. Uh, <laughs> it's more real maybe. In a way, yeah, you, know, in you, know, ways. you know, I was in Los Angeles the other day and I love America, but you know, if anyone else said to me, have a good one. You know, I really wanted to punch them on the nose. I just said, you did you, know. did you, and did you uh, end, end, end up punching someone on the nose? No, I didn't, but I, oh, there was one stage I was, you yeah. know, I have a great one, you know, yeah. and I, oh my God, please, you know, you don't even know who I am. How's it going? How's it going? You know, whereas in Paris, they don't bother about no, that it's stuff, true. you know. And, and I like that. Yeah. You know, I like that sort of hard assness. Uh, if you had uh, one piece of advice to give to Sciences Po students in communication, what would it be? Be curious. Do you think that everyone can be creative or do you think that some people are creative, some are not? Some people are more creative than others. And if you yourself are not creative, but you might be very good at uh, execution or running, a, running a, an event, but you need to have someone to help you with the creative idea. That's what agencies are for, for example. But it's all about the idea at first. Mm -hmm.